Chapter One of Australian Legendary Tales Folklore. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Australian Legendary Tales Folklore by Mrs. K. Langlow Parker. Chapter One. Dime One the Emu, and Goobblegubbin, the Bustard. Dime One, the Emu, being the largest bird, was acknowledged as king by the other birds. The Goobblegubbins, the Bustards, were jealous of the Dime Ones. Particularly was Goobblegubbin, the mother, jealous of the Dime One mother. She would watch with envy the high flight of the Dime Ones, and their swift running and she always fancied that the Dineone mother flaunted her superiority in her face, for whenever Dineone alighted near Goobblegubbin, after a long, high flight, she would flap her big wings and begin booing in her pride, not the loud booing of the male bird, but a little triumphant, satisfied booing noise of her own, which never failed to irritate Goobblegubbin when she heard it. Goobblegubbin used to wonder how she could put an end to Dineone's supremacy. She decided that she would only be able to do so by injuring her wings and checking her power of flight. But the question that troubled her was how to effect this end. She knew she would gain nothing by having a quarrel with Dineone and fighting her, for no Goobblegubbin would stand any chance against a Dineone. There was evidently nothing to be gained by an open fight. She would have to effect her end by cunning. One day, when Goobblegubbin saw in the distance Diamond coming towards her, she squatted down and doubled in her wings in such a way as to look as if she had none. After Diamond had been talking to her for some time, Goobblegubbin said, "'Why do you not imitate me and do without wings?' every bird flies. The dime ones to be the king of birds should do without wings. When all the birds see that I can do without wings, they will think I am the cleverest bird, and they will make a Goobblegubbin king. But you have wings, said Diamond. No, I have no wings. And indeed she looked as if her words were true, so well were her wings hidden, as she squatted in the grass. Dimewin went away after a while, and thought much of what she had heard. She talked it over with her mate, who was as disturbed as she was. They made up their minds that it would never do to let the Goobblegubbins reign in their steed, even if they had to lose their wings to save their kingship. At length they decided on the sacrifice of their wings, the Dimewin mother showed the example by persuading her mate to cut off hers with a combo or stone tomahawk, and then she did the same to his. As soon as the operations were over, the Dimewin mother lost no time in letting Goobblegubbin know what they had done. She ran swiftly down to the plain on which she had left Goobblegubbin, and, finding her still squatting there, she said, See, I have followed your example. I have no wings. They are cut off. Ha, 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 laughed Goobblegubbin, jumping up and dancing round with joy at the success of her plot. As she danced round, she spread out her wings, flapped them, and said, I have taken you in, old stumpy wings. I have my wings yet. You are fine birds, you dime ones, to be chosen kings, when you are so easily taken in. Ha, ha, ha! And, laughing derisively, Goobblegubbin flapped her wings right in front of Dimewin, who rushed towards her to chastise her treachery. But Goobblegubbin flew away, and, alas, the now wingless Dimewin could not follow her. Brooding over her wrongs, Dimewin walked away, vowing she would be revenged. But how? That was the question which she and her mate failed to answer for some time. At length the Dimewin mother thought of a plan and prepared at once to execute it. 
She hid all her young diamonds but two under a big salt bush. Then she walked off to Goobalgubbin's plain with the two young ones following her. As she walked off the Morella Ridge, where her home was, on to the plain, she saw Goobalgubbin out feeding with her twelve young ones. After exchanging a few remarks in a friendly manner with Goobalgubbin, she said to her, why do you not imitate me and only have two children? Twelve are too many to feed. If you keep so many, they will never grow big birds like the diamonds. The food that would make big birds of two would only starve twelve. Goobalgubbin said nothing, but she thought it might be so. It was impossible to deny that the young diamonds were much bigger than the young Goobalgubbins and discontentedly Goobalgubbin walked away, wondering whether the smallness of her young ones was owing to the number of them being so much greater than that of the diamonds. It would be grand, she thought, to grow as big as the diamonds, but she remembered the trick she had played on diamond, and she thought that perhaps she was being fooled in her turn. She looked back to where the diamonds fed, and as she saw how much bigger the two young ones were than any of hers, once more mad envy of Diamond possessed her. She determined she would not be outdone. Rather would she kill all her young ones but two. She said, The Diamonds shall not be the king birds of the plains. The Goobalgubbins shall replace them. They shall grow as big as the Diamonds, and shall keep their wings and fly, which now the diamonds cannot do. And straight away Goobalgubbin killed all her young ones but two. Then back she came to where the diamonds were still feeding. When Diamond saw her coming and noticed she had only two young ones with her, she called out, Where are all your young ones? Goobalgubbin answered, I have killed them, and have only left two. Those will have plenty to eat now, and will soon grow as big as your young ones. You cruel mother to kill your children, you greedy mother! Why, I have twelve children, and I find food for them all. I would not kill one for anything, not even if so by doing, I could get back my wings. There is plenty for all. Look at the emu bush, how it covers itself with berries, to feed my big family. See how the grasshoppers come hopping round, so that we can catch them and fatten on them. But you have only two children. I have twelve. I will go and bring them to show you. Diamond ran off to her salt bush, where she had hidden her ten young ones. Soon she was to be seen coming back, running with her neck stretched forward, her head thrown back with pride and the feathers of her boo-boo teller swinging as she ran, booming out the while her queer throat noise, the diamond song of joy, the pretty, soft-looking little ones with their zebra-striped skins, running beside her whistling their baby diamond note. When diamond reached the place where Goobalgubbin was, she stopped her booing and said in a solemn tone, Now you see my words are true. I have twelve young ones, as I said. You can gaze at my loved ones and think of your poor murdered children, and while you do so I will tell you the fate of your descendants forever. By trickery and deceit you lost the diamonds their wings, and now for evermore, as long as a diamond has no wings, so long shall a Goobalgubbin lay only two eggs, and have only two young ones. We are quits now. You have your wings, and I have my children. And ever since that time a diamond, or emu, has had no wings, and a Goobalgubbin, or bustard of the plains, has laid only two eggs in a season. End of chapter 1